Gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of What a Horse. Yes, sir. We got Jerry Williams here. Jerry, I want everybody to be praying for you and your wife. I know I she's, appreciate uh, it. she's in the hospital. It. Yes. Seems like every time you turn around, somebody else is going on. Hospital. You're right. Well, you do your gig, and I'll uh, then we will start in telling it like it is. How it work. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Two-time world champion and world grand champion Joe Hall is now standing at stud during the 2023 breeding season at Precious Memory Farm for $750. Contact Daniel Miller, 931-703-5830 or Shane Porterfield, 615-809-4257. Joe Hall is now standing at stud at Precious Memory Farm. All righty, welcome back. I got a couple of announcements to make. Celebration Fall Classic starts tomorrow night, Thursday night, in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Start time 6 p.m. Scotty Brooks, Jamie Lawrence, and Chad Williams will mark the card. And you can call 931 684 5915 and talk to them over at Celebration about how you can enter and everything like this. Yeah. United Fall Finale is November 16th through the 18th in Tunica, Mississippi. Call D. Cantrell, 706-366-1011 or Sarah Smith, 931-580-5085. Derek Bonner, Ross Campbell, and Jamie Hankins will mark the cards. I wanted to also bring up something that, of course, I, I, we say in a prayer for your wife, Jerry, but also we want people to pray for the Barnhill family. Oh, yes. Brian Barnhill's farm, his barn, a lot of his horses, it caught on fire and burnt. And uh, he just, he, he's a super good guy. Oh, he is. Hard worker. Real good guy. And, uh, 
I wanted to bring this up too. This is what the walking horse industry does. Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, over at Jake Jacobs. They started a fundraiser for Brian. Stud fees, all the stud owners donating stud fees. So they've got them out there. And then Sugar Creek jumped in. Yes. They're offering stud fees too. So what I'm going to suggest, they got some good prices. Call Spencer Benedict. Tell him to give you a list of the ones that are left. Call Sugar Creek. Tell them to give you a list of the ones that are left and get you people out there looking to breed a stud. Breed one. Call and get, see if you can't help Ryan because it's, uh, I'll tell you what, that's pretty devastating. That you look out good. there and you watch your barn burn, losing some of your horses. Your whole livelihood and stuff uh, flashing between your eyes right there. You know, that's a, that's a horrible feeling. Well, it's uh. Um, and Brian is a hard-working person, always been real nice and been real nice to me all the time, ever okay. since I've been knowing him. Oh, he's super good. Yeah, you know, there's no doubt good, about he's it. He's a good he's, person. I just hate that it happened. Yes, me too. And there's some other things on the plate. Uh, the industry has sent in their comment. And I'm going to say something, and people... I may make some people mad, some people happy, whatever, but I'm just going to tell it like it is. I've read that several different times. And each time I read it, to be just to be honest, there's a lot of work that went into it, a bunch of research. I know when back when I went to the Tennessee State Capitol to try to get a video law. I showed a lot of video of what the USDA was doing to keep us from videoing yes. their actions. And uh, there's a lot of people down there that they, they was just beside there. They could not believe that that's what we was going through. That's one reason we got the law passed unanimously is because of the way the USDA was treating. I mean, they even kicked Channel 5 out. Once we started videoing, we got a lot of evidence. Well, through the years, of, there's been a whole lot more evidence got of horses that are turning, been turned down for different reasons. Uh, it wasn't easy getting that law passed building up to it, but once we presented it, it was 100% approval. Well, this was back in 16. That's how long we've been able to video the horses. Yes. And in this reply, they bring up a lot of things that uh, the walking horse industry is looking for. One of them is equal footing with other breeds. So the same rules apply to us that applies to them that applies to us. That's not the way it is right now. We're constantly under attack. That's why in all their examples of the what's going on, they only use the walking horse because they've not inspected any other breeds. Yes. So that's for one. But uh, the data through research was shown to be false, uh, fall, fatally fouled in, in several different locations, inflated numbers, violations that they came up with, which were violations, but they weren't soaring violations but they're including them in with the soaring violations. In other words, make a long story short, USDA, in my personal opinion, from what I read in the, the comments, has committed fraud. And uh, if I was them, I would hate to know I was about to go to court with the evidence that we've got against their wrongdoing. And they're pretty much, they're, they're, it's pretty obvious. Uh, 
improperly over inflating the data supposedly showing soaring violations by using non-soaring violations as an example. Uh, but falsifying evidence, that, that's the one that really gets me is yes. they have gone to such a point that they cannot find what they want, so they're falsifying it to give justification on what they're doing. So I can assure them of one thing. I will be videoing. A bunch of other people are going to be videoing. Uh, but we're, I think this industry has finally reached the point, Jerry, that they're no longer willing to lay down and let the government do anything they want to. Well, you they get to a point where you're just tired of getting kicked and kicked and kicked all the time. Well, you can only do that so, so, so long. much, you know. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, they had a lady that uh, turned them down horses for foreign substance. The foreign substance dirt. Yeah. There was an example that was given in the comment section to where Vaseline is, is a it's not prohibitive for us to use. But uh, it was pointed out that last year they found a horse out on a violation that once the Vaseline mixed with the sweat, it became a foreign substance as far as they was concerned. Yeah. Different you, things. I mean, you know, my biggest thing is this, Jerry, and I may be wrong, and I have been wrong a lot of times before. But I, the, the DQP, the USDA, to me, is there to find a sore horse and a scored horse. All this other stuff they're coming up with, I don't understand it. You know, a lot of um, people don't. The foreign substance, I mean, the thing of it, I mean, either horse got a scar or he's sore. I mean, you take women, when they go out to town or they go somewhere, they put makeup on their face. Or whatever. And you hardly ever see a natural woman walk around there with this, with no makeup or no nothing. No. Even the BMOs that come, the women that check the horses, I, I guarantee you, they they come to that horse show and they got some kind of makeup, but they got something that's on them. They ain't wake up that way. Well, I tell you what, I like to watch. I like to watch them when, back when you could get a second opinion and things. They, one VMO would call it out. You get another VMO to look at it, the other VMO would disagree, so they'd argue with each other over it. Well, once they found out, well, we can't prove it this way, so we ain't going to do that no more because that makes us look bad. So now this is the VMO, yeah. so we ain't going to give them a second opinion. Well, the biggest thing with this is this is a show horse, and you bring him to show and to look good and be, you know, to present to people out there that's watching this horse. Well, it's just like them right there. Now, they're, they're having a discussion because everybody can't be right. And since they're not right, they can't agree on it. They, they have an altercation about it. Well, we got some women that come in here. And it seems to me like they, they get in a tug of war on who can find the most violations and since they can't find any they start creating them because they got to win they got to be the one that finds the most violations and all you got to do is watch them you watch them and it's obvious right here is one that she saw something and so she wants to make sure everybody knows what she saw well she's got a job to do there but you watch her in a minute. Now, she she will take off, run over there. There she goes. Now, she's going over to tell them exactly what she thinks so they can find it. If something was really wrong with that horse, the other veterinarian, he would have known exactly what to do. Now, here she goes. She's going to run over there. She's got to tell him, hey, we got to get this guy right here. It's just things like that. Yeah. That are so obvious that it's not funny. 
and she sits there and she's telling him all about this stuff. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. And what is, it just makes me that much oh, it's angry. angry. It's, it's aggravating. I mean, it's just like when you go to that entry thing to enter your horse. I mean, to me, that government, that DQP, they stay there to check that horse. They don't have no right to me to go to where a horse is being entered at and find out any they, information the horse is that's, they, that's being entered. You know, you should be right there checking that horse as that horse come in. I'm glad you brought that up because it, this is a question. I'm not an attorney, but it's again. I do know this. It's against the law to lie under oath. Yes. All right. So they come and they get the entry forms to go over to see who's showing in what class and everything. I would love to set them down, everybody that was in that room, and each one of them asked them what was said, why they wanted that pre-entries. They don't need pre-entries. All they need to know is a horse coming through Come here. Come through and you check that horse as that horse walked through there. It's just like the judge out in the center ring. They don't need to know who's going to be in the class. They're supposed to judge them when they come in. come in. That's but right. the USDA wants to know who the trainer is, who the owner is, and what the horse's name is, and then they're going to go. They know exactly, exactly when. We've got video of them passing horses without even looking at them so they can go get particular trainers. That is targeting. They know this. So I'm, I'm just hoping that, uh, that they continue to do it and uh, see, see what they can come up with on uh, what, what, if under oath. Because yes. it, it's going to end up in court. I'm well satisfied of that, that it will end up in court. And when it does, I want to know which one of them will stand there and lie about what's going on. And especially when they say, did someone order you to do this? Or are you doing it on your own? I'd love, to, I'd love for them to ask those questions. I'd love to see the answers. I'd love to know if somebody is willing to stand there and lie to protect a superior. Because I can tell you right now, number one, if someone asked me to do something that I knew was unethical or dishonest, first I wouldn't do it. And if I was asked under oath if someone told me to do it, you better believe it. they're gone. Yeah. I'll tell them in a heartbeat. So it, it just, if, if, if working for the government means you've got to be corrupt, then I would not want a judge. It's just like what we did. We, we reset a horse because it's so close Yeah. that better than be sorry, I'd rather be safe Say, yeah, you and exactly, happy. You exactly but right. Just like that. The rulers do not measure the same. Yeah. There is proof of exactly what we're saying. You're exactly right. The scales don't weigh the same. No. So this is what the walking horse industry faces all the time, and we know it. We know that we've got the cards are stacked against us, we, but we don't need VMOs out there creating stuff to attack us with. Yes. If they can't go by the law and follow what they know is right, they don't have no business out there. As simple as that. And to send a couple of women in that want to outdo each other, I'd rather see them send them someplace and let them get a race, foot race someplace, and put people out there that will inspect our horses honestly and without prejudice. Yeah. And what's happening right now is is different. I mean, we're we're not getting we're just not getting an honest end of anything. We're being attacked. We're being targeted. The whole nine yards. So that that's my problem with it. Let's go to uh, let's watch some racking horse. There we go. I knew we had some. But we ain't I ain't done with this USDA thing yet. He's Slim Sevy and Jamie Lawrence for Roy Wester. I tell you, Kenny Lawrence and I talked about that horse. Yeah, that's a nice horse. Hey, now. I'm gonna tell you now he's 
He is tough. Jamie does a fantastic job. job. And give everybody an update. They say Jamie's grandbaby is coming along good, getting better all the time, and we are so thankful for that. There's another good guy, Jamie Lawrence. Super good guy. Roy Wester's a pretty good dude, too. Yes. <laughs> Now that was him, uh, he slim Sevy. But then he comes back and he wins the world That's championship. Nice horse. World nice. grand champion. Wins them roses. It's a nice horse. Right here's one. <laughs> now that that's something right there. Honors image and county green for Shane Porterfield. So that was the first one of the greens to ever win a racking world championship. And she came back and won a racking world grand championship on the same horse. That's a real nice horse there. Honors has got them in the racking and the walking yeah. that's world grand champions. And I would think if we did a little research, he's probably got some in the spotted too. Yeah. You know, going back in this horse industry like this, Gary, just like what happened to Brian Bond here, this horse family is coming together and helping each other out. Well, you got you to. Know, um, but I mean, this, but that's what this horse does for everybody. I mean, it, it brings people together and, you know, and help each other. Well, that's what it's all about. They, the barns, breeding barns coming out, raising funds. Yes. That, that's one thing. It's just, and we have to fight constantly to have shows. And I, I just feel like if everything was ethical and honest, we'd be a whole lot better off. And, and the government wouldn't be such a pain if yeah. they would just go in with an open mind rather than wanting to find something so bad that they create something. Yes. And then they have to falsify and more or less break the law in order to keep it going. We're going to East Tennessee now. They had a good show up oh, there. They had a good show. I am Mighty Jose and Tanner Burks for Shane Porterfield. That was your reserve winner. That Tanner is a good trainer. Oh, yeah, Tanner is a good trainer. He does a good, good job. job. Got a good horse and a good owner. This is what gets me is we, we got horses go out here that show two shows in a row, two nights in a row, or two out of three nights, it, it do great. Oh yeah. Amateur ladies winner, I am Body Jose in County Green for Shane Porterfield. So that's what really, it just bothers me. It also bothers me how they can go to one show and pass in and out and go to another show and get turned out. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. And I would think that if you're record keeping, that uh, you'd be a little bit better at it. Right here's Super Bowl MVP and B.B. Beasley. Reserve 12 to 17. You're always going to find that horse right there 
in the top two to three. Oh, yeah. You're never going to see him lower. He's going to be right up there at the top every show you go to. Both of them ride real well. And the mom. They're driving real well now. They turned 16. Oh, okay. Yep. Hey, they got them a car. You phonies. I am big enough in Maxine Misery. That little horse right there gets to be on the top oh. now. He's oh, always, yeah. He's it's good. good. i tell you what tickles me. Is I, I asked Beth about the, uh, I said, you going to have to buy two vehicles? She said, no, they're going to share. I had to buy my own number one, and I wasn't sharing it with nobody. <laughs> Here's Joe Pa, Pro-Am class, Shane Porterfield, and Tanner Burks. I'm glad to see Shane showing, back in the ring showing. I am too. Shane's a good guy. He's Shane's good for the guy. industry. Yeah. Always a joy to talk to, too. Right there, protest that. Uh, that's your racket. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets in on a little bit of everything. He told me, he said he really doesn't have a great head shake, but he can get it done. I, that's a fact. He looked classy doing it. Yeah, he does. And he, he doesn't have a bad head shake either. No. That's a pretty thing, I know yeah, that. He is. Protest that. That's a nifty little name. There's your Super Bowl MVP again. That horse is just plain good. Yeah. How old do you think that horse is? About 16? I'm going to say he's close to it. He's been showing for a while, yeah. I need to check this way. That's for sure. He is a nice one. Nice one. Getting the job done yeah. anyway. That's mm -hmm. what. That's all that matters. But Jerry, I think you're up again. We'll be right <laughs> back after these messages. <laughs> Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Food can open endless possibilities for people to thrive. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished. Everyone deserves to live a full life. And with your help, together we can end hunger. Join the movement at feedingamerica.org slash act now. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. We've done automobile dealerships, 
shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411 and see if I can save you money on your communications. All right. You know, Jerry, there's a lot of people are wondering what we're going to be doing and what if this and what if that. And here's something for everybody to think about. There's no evidence that the pads hurt the horse. Yeah. The action device doesn't hurt the horse. The bands doesn't hurt the horse. The heavy shoe doesn't hurt the horse. But that lady with them hoof testers, now, buddy, she was out to hurt the horse. Yeah. <laughs> I keep going back to that and looking at that, that they will do anything to get a horse to move and then look at us like, see how abusive you are? Lee? But I, we're fixing to show some video of what we do, or you do more than I do, but like right here. I'm all the time, I talk about the carding and all this. Right there, you've got a, a young horse. Yeah. This is a filly, I believe, uh -huh. Honor's filly, isn't it? Yeah. There's Jim, he's out there watching. There comes Jeremy, he's got him one out there. Now, he, I bet you he ain't out there in shirt sleeves today. No, uh -uh, he ain't. But this is the way most days are spent. Oh yeah, he's riding horses and... And right there comes another, there's Taz. He's got one that y'all just breaking. breaking. Mm -hmm. So you're on one, that, now is that a filly too? Yeah, it's a filly. Mm -hmm. What's it by? Um, Jimmy Chu. Jimmy Chu? Yeah. All right. Jimmy Chu filly and an honors filly. And what's the one Jeremy's on? By honors. He's by honors no. too. Yeah. Who's Jim by? Huh? Who's Jim? Who's he by? I, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, old Chaz, what was it Jeremy said? Said he's one of them Alabama, or Mississippi boys. Yeah. Said he's a Mississippi boy. Said you can't get him out of the saddle. That's right. He likes to ride. Now that's only that feeling about third time of riding. Well, I tell you what, I watched him the first time he carried her out there, and uh, he he was, you know, she was first time yeah. she rid. <laughs> but now she's got good movement. Dad does a good job with them coats. He's real easy with them. I like the cart myself. Yeah, I, I, I do. do. I used to go out and, and at Rising Star, and uh, I had a couple of horses out there that I go out there and cart them all the time. But I think that carting makes them use it. It's kind yeah. of like swimming to me with a human. Yeah, I learned about push and pull, you know, and I use the back end and everything. I mean, um, I believe they work more and, muscles that yeah, way. Yeah, and keep them in line. Well, she's going to be a good one. she got a nice right her in. That little feel it right there, that's, she, that's only about, about two months of, of working right there. That's it. Yeah. She's trying to get everything together. I know Jim, he, he enjoys it. Yeah, he's that's, that's enjoy, yeah, sure. he really enjoyed it. That's a nice one right there. Yeah. You hear that wind blowing out there? Yeah. But this is the way that horse people spend their days. They get out and they just do a little bit of everything. Anything to work a horse. I'd rather spend my days doing this right here than running the roads and getting in trouble. <laughs> That's it. And running behind, running from the cops or whatever. Mm -hmm. I promise you. And you know, and I raised my son up doing this. And a lot of times, his friends, some of the ones he he was went to high school with, you know, they was some of them in jail, some of them then got killed or whatever. But every day, I thank the Lord for 
my dad teaching me this trade and I'm teaching him and where this is where he want to spend his Saturday, Friday nights and Saturday nights doing is going to a horse show and showing. You know, bunch of these kids do. You know, I like and that's to what I'm saying. The kids, and that's what this horse do, keep keep a lot of kids out of trouble and keep, and keep them doing something. Well, that's the problem we have with a lot of people. They don't, uh, they don't, uh, they don't look at the future. They look at right now and yes. what could be done. Now we're going to go into some trail riding in different things that are doing. And, and the reason I'm doing it, I want everybody to know what all we have, what we, what our horses are capable of doing. This is Sly. Now we showed him several times. I've got different videos. He wore the pads, but I decided to make a trail horse out of him. And we have done some pretty wild things with him. Yeah. He seems to take to everything, and that's I one thing. I tell you, that's a real people. smart horse. I tell you, that horse takes pretty much whatever you ask that horse to do, he he does it. Well, and you can go back and see different videos when he was on pads. He done good on pads. You know, part performance shoe, he done good on it. And then this pulling that buggy and trail riding. I mean, he's well, he's just an all around good he's horse. He's all around good horse yeah. and a pretty horse. I know the Todd's told me that uh, we had him over there. Left him over there for what three weeks? Yeah, and uh, within ten minutes, bareback on a halter, they had him getting up on the the boxes. Yeah. Now, tell people why you're doing this. If y'all notice, he does not have a lunge rope on this horse. Well, it's loosening him up, just like a person finna get ready, you know, to work out. Or whatever you you know, you kind of you kind of stretching, kind of letting him go around on his own, you know, and just kind of letting him just warm his body up. And then when I get ready to, to catch him, you know, I can just stop, and he'll stop and turn around and come to me. Well, Sly is a good one. Yeah, now, I, I'm going to say I mean, that. He's he a is. very smart horse. And he, I like one that you can teach yeah. different things. Teaching him is, is, I mean, he falls right in line with just about anything you want to do. You know, I take him one, make him go one way, and then turn around, make him go the other way. Well, he's learned that that's what he's supposed yeah. to do. <laughs> so you don't know, like you just put him out there and let him do it. Kind of but like push butt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the way it's supposed to be? And I just tell everyone that's pretty good because I usually have to have a stool to get up on one. <laughs> <laughs> he well, just, he, he's he's just under 15 I, hands. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But with flat shot on. But I'll, we're fixing to do something that a lot of people say, well, what's you, what's, so what's that? What's that? Well, if, we, if you have to get off of a horse every time you get, get ready to open the gate yeah. and uh, worry about him not liking it, well, then you, you're in trouble. <laughs> but with, with this one, you just ride up there. And you used to everything. You know, I try to get these horses going where you can, any environment they're used to. Going in the up and down hills, going down, if I want to ride down 231 out there on that highway out there, he's used to that, I'm trying to get him used to just a little everything. Well, that's the main thing. You get to, you get these horses to where they don't spook. Yeah. And and that's, that's big, especially when, like, mounted patrol. That's one thing that they really like about the walking horse is you can desensitize them to where... They, they don't get all riled up yeah. and shook when people are around. Now, I've seen videos out there of uh, other breeds that where people walk up and touch them on the back end, they kick them from here to Hades. Oh, yeah. So it, it's a lot of difference when, you, when you're doing this. I do a lot of petting to them, you know, like that, to teach them and, you know, show them that they're doing good, you know, not getting so rough. wild up. With that gate come back to some horse, some horse will run backwards from it, and, yep. you know, or jump from it or whatever. Well, they just don't, uh, yeah. 
it comes with work, Jerry, and it comes with training, and it tongue comes with a lot of it with trust. Yeah. Because if the horse trusts you, he will do things for you that other breeds, they may not want to do this. But we're fixing to do different things with this horse today that uh, just to show that they can be trained and they can be worked. Yeah. And they will do all kinds of things if you ask them to. Every time I stop my pet him and show him that he's doing a good job. He's looking at me like, now I'm doing real good. When am I going to get a treat? <laughs> but he does. Now he, he, he is one horse that I am very proud of. Number one, it wasn't like trying to get on sci-fi. You didn't have to have an elevator. Yeah, that's right. He's close enough to the ground that it ain't that hard for to get on him. This horse him make good woman's horse, kid horse. You know, he's stout enough to totally pretty good sized man. You know. Well, he's got you on his back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were running about a lot that of beans. Good size. There's a lot of beans and potatoes there, that's buddy. Right. <laughs> well, he rode me. So yeah. I mean, he carried me around pretty good. He carries Savannah around. He carries two little boys around. Uh -huh. So he, he gets it done pretty good. But he gets he gets to gating pretty good too. Oh, and that's yeah. on a trail ride. Now that you can do that all day long. Now, like I say, anything you ask this horse to do, he gonna do it. I mean he he gonna try to do it. And don't get toe up about it. If he ain't ever done it before, when you first ask him, he don't get toe up about it. He just kind of, you just try to show him this one, two times, and he's going to learn it. He just learned real quick. You know, that's one thing that Todd said, that, uh, that he's cautious, he's careful, but he's willing. It's just like uh, we got video of him the first time that he went into water, when he went yeah. into a creek. They showed how he went in, and, and it's kind of like you stick your toe in to see how yeah. cool yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Well, he put his foot in it, and then he went right on. So these are things that a smart horse. Oh, yeah, that's right. One that's trainable, you can do. That's the first time you carried him down through uh -huh. there. He's checking it out. He's got it. We're done. Here we go. You're out trail riding. You don't know yeah, when you're you gonna run into something, something like that, that. Different, different little things or whatever. That's why I try to teach them. You know, just like I say, going riding down the highway. While I'm from Louisiana, we didn't ride up and down hills. We didn't handle hills. We rode on the highway, <laughs> and you go across so coverage, yep, yep. stuff like that. So you ain't got no hills down there. Yeah. <laughs> you rode, you know, coverage out there. You rode across and side the interstate and everything else. Now, there, there are some hills in Tennessee, I can tell yeah. you. Some of them are pretty steep. I know on the War Trace ride, there's one that everybody has to go up the hill. Yeah. I'm just glad that I was on a horse when I went up and didn't have to walk up it. He's trying to decide what all he's going to do. I tell you the good part about it is uh, we put old Taz on him. Yeah. And we'll show him in a minute to where uh, Taz carried him out there and went up a, a big hill a back there yeah. behind. Mm -hmm. That's just like right there. That dirt that's piled up there is real soft. But I mean, he put his first foot on there, and then he realized what he had done. He just walked right up on there and didn't yep. have no problem. Well, I've watched him do a lot of things. I've I've never seen yeah. him back up. That's what I'm saying. You ask him, he's gonna, he gonna he gonna go for it. 
You know, while we're watching this, though, I, I, I keep going back to the USDA. Yeah. And I want to tell everybody that this weekend, we got a show this weekend, then we got another. You have the right to video your horse. I suggest you do that. And it's just like me. I have my horse checked by a veterinarian, an equine veterinarian, before I ever go to the horse show. Yeah. I want to make sure my horse is in good shape. I want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with him because I am not going to be bullied. That's one thing I'm not. You're right about that. Well, I suggest to everybody, video your horses, video them, have them checked, stand up for your rights. Watch everything that's going on around you. You know, I was surprised that he jumped up on there that quick mm -hmm. with them tanks there. That's what I'm saying. I and mean, that's the first time he ever done that in his life. It just makes me want to go riding. Yeah. But it's cold out there today. <laughs> it's pretty chilly. Well, we're supposed to get some warm weather on up in the week. It's supposed to be warmer at night than it yeah. is today. Now we're going to do something that only Roy Rogers would do. <laughs> Load your horse up. That's right. Don't worry about it. Just ride him on up in there. He'll go. You know, he don't jump off. You know, there's another horse trail right in front of there. I mean, he just. That's what don't I'm talking about. That horse got no a, panic. He's got a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Plus, he's got a lot of trust, too. Yeah. Now, Taz going to try him around. know what it was. You didn't want to ride up them hills. <laughs> I just now figured that out. Oh, I'm just showing how much, you know, he the same way with one person riding it is with the other person riding, Jerry. That's my story and I'm gonna stick to it. <laughs> oh, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna let everybody in the neighborhood ride this horse show you right. he's gonna ride the same. Everybody can see that's not that's rock and everything is out there that he's going around and ain't getting no and the footing ain't the best and no horses don't go through this so it ain't no trail that he's going through right there he's making his own little way going down he's going on one of them Bobby McNatt trail yeah. rides Bobby carried me on one after that big storm come through years ago uh -huh. while we was we was going where Davy Crockett. <laughs> Put that to fight our way through. <laughs> That's a, we are getting him ready to go to the auction. Make someone a good horse. Oh yeah, real nice horse. thing about it. How old is your grandson? He's eight. Eight. He showed him. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm 
I was surprised that he did that because there's a big hole. There's a big hole in there. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that's what I'm saying. He just, he well, do whatever you want him to do. He, he just does it. Yeah. All righty. I think you got to do your thing again. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. The Mona Dean family is proud to announce that the multi-time world champion and world grand champion minor ordeal is now available for breeding at Sugar Creek Breeding Facility for the 2023 spring breeding season. Minor Ordeal has proven year after year that he is one of the elite champions of all time winning five World Grand Championships, one World Grand Championship, and the Reserve World Grand Championship as well. Minor Ordeal, a major win here in the two-year-old division, our World Grand Champion. Make the call to breed to a true champion, Minor Ordeal. 931-680-0897. Where does your donation to the Humane Society of the United States really go? Their CEO makes more than $450,000. Their top execs make more than $200,000 each. The Humane Society of the United States isn't even affiliated with any local humane societies and only gives about 1% of the money it raises to local pet shelters. So, if you want to help homeless pets, give to local shelters. Learn more at HumaneWatch.org. More of What a Horse coming up. You know, Jerry, we we showing all this video, and that's what we want to do, show different yeah. video. But our main concern right now is uh, the... Uh, rules that the USDA yes. make mm -hmm. and what our next step's going to be, which I'm pretty sure I know what our next step's going to be. Uh, I just uh, I, I just don't know. I, I, it concerns me so much because we've been stepped on and walked on for so long. Yeah, you're right. That uh, now it seems more and more people are saying, well, that's it. Plus, it's got to be so obvious and so one-sided and it's it's like they just keep keep going pushing 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 like there's nothing we can do and i think they're fixing to find out that they have pushed too far they have crossed too far over the line and uh that i'm looking forward to seeing look we got a little bit more video and this is uh Slide now. He he got his. He's getting his treat now. He uh. He gets all all tore up, but he'll he'll start stomping his foot. Wants wanting his foot, wanting his treats. He know when you pull up, he know the sound of your vehicle. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when you pull up, he he sticks his head out that door and back in that stall and back and forth. Well, he's he's a pistol now because they. I went around the corner and he got that head stuck out looking. Yeah, he's telling me. That, that tickles me though. He, he'll stomp that foot. Oh yeah. He said, give it to me. A lot of people say, you really talking to that horse? I talk to him all the time. Mm -hmm. If he ever says something back to me like Mr. Ed, though, I'm going to have a fit. <laughs> going out to the Colts now, because that's, uh, right there is nine, oh, that right there is Juneteenth. 
as 9-11 up against the fence. They like that camera. Yeah. There's one thing about Tennessee walking horses. You go out there with a camera, I guarantee you they're going to walk up to you. <laughs> they're going to come see what that is, get my picture. Nine eleven, there, buddy. He he likes them apple oh, trees. Yeah. What's that other one by? I am Jose. I am Jose. For Ray Carr. Now, from the time we went out, and I fed them coats, and we come back in. He had already done it. This is the only fault with Sly. <laughs> you got to make sure that house is tied up on him. Because he will flat walk out of it. <laughs> but he, 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 he won't just, go nowhere. He won't go nowhere. He, once he gets it off, he just sits there and watches everybody. Just want to know I would never put him out in the pasture yeah. <laughs> with, with a halter on because we'd never find the halter. Well, now, he's a real nice, even tempered horse, you know. He is a pistol. Yeah, There's no is. doubt about it. He is a pistol. Well, I want to remind everybody we got a horse show starting tomorrow night. I uh, suggest all of you have your horses checked before you take them. I also suggest you video because the more video we have to prove our side, the better off we're going to yes. be. Uh, I just, uh, some of the things that we've faced through the years is, it's just all coming to a head. Yeah, you're right. And uh, we've got one man that I'm not mentioning his name, everybody knows who he is, but he has done a lot of work, a lot of work. An example of that work was put in the comments. Yeah. And uh, that there's a lot of hours went into that, <clears throat> a lot of hours. But the facts are the facts, and we are using the USDA's own data. Yeah. Shows what they did. And that, to me, is I've done a better job <laughs> if I was going to do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next week when we will report on the Fall Classic, yep. our next to last show this year. Y'all yeah, be safe out there. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse. I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm gonna be in that winner's circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.